When I was younger, I mean, it's kind of hard to go back, but I remember being called a tomboy. Um, I was always trying to keep up with my older brother. Um, I was always, I was always ripping my dresses. I remember, you know, my mom just, so you just sit on the swing, don't stand on the swing, was pretty spirited, I guess I, I guess I would say. But I, I always wanted to do well in school too. You know, when I first, I remember when I got my first B, I was like devastated. My, um, my brother was uh, two years into Maine Maritime Academy. And here I was coming come along and I wanted to go to Dartmouth, Mount Holyoke, some of Smith, some of the big back east schools. And then I had two sisters who were both, you know, had college aspirations of, of their own. So I knew that my parents couldn't necessarily swing a, a college tuition, at least to the schools that I wanted to go to. So it was my senior year and my, my dad had read an article that um, they were accepting women at the service academies. And it was one of those conversations, um, why don't we see if we can get in? I graduated from high school in June of 1976, and uh, about five days later, I was on an airplane, the second airplane ride I had ever had, um, and on was and was on my way to the Air Force Academy. I, I remember uh, arriving and seeing uh, a lot of the, the the press, but we were just so focused on what we were trying to do and surviving every day that really didn't impact or uh, make it as a huge impression on, on me. I remember not wanting to draw attention to myself, so whenever a reporter would come, come up to us or want to talk to us, it'd be like, ugh, you know what, I'm going to get in trouble for this or I'm going to say something that's going to make some upperclassmen upset with me. I, I'd say that um, eventually I understood that we were making history, but but we didn't think a lot about it at the moment. In the first semester um, and the second semester, well, I didn't I didn't do didn't do that great. I was so into wanting to fit into the squadron that I spent a lot of time in the squadron. I probably spent more time doing the military aspect and the athletic aspect aspect of the fourth class year that my, you know, my grades were the ones that suffered. Dark Ages at the Academy, it was like February, and my, my parents sent me a card. I have it to this day. The card said, to achieve all that is possible, we must attempt the impossible. To be as much as we can be, we must dream of being more. I read it and I went, wow, okay. This is something that I can, I can do. So things are going to seem impossible to me, but I'm going to try it because I'm going to get further than I thought I would have if I hadn't. And then dream of being more. I think I had a greater appreciation once I left the academy and came back. I realized all the things that I experienced at the academy, I understood the reason. I understood the reason why. And I hadn't really thought about it because I was very, very interested in um, my Air Force career and what I was doing in the Air Force and meeting the challenges that out there. So it was when I came back and then I definitely learned that when when I was when I was the Commandant. We've got a very, very tight class. That long blue line is is real. It it, it is real and it's there and there's a special connection with anyone who's a part of that long blue line. There's a comfort and a knowing that uh, you belong. You belong in that long blue line and that you're a part of that. It's a special bond, for sure. I'm just proud to, to be in that line.